You are listening to the Practicing the Art of Small Business podcast with Shannon Merlot and Julie Parker. Join their conversations about business, leadership, and self-awareness journey to greater success. Hello, Julie Parker. On today's episode of Practicing the Art of Small Business, we are talking tools of the trade. Tools of the trade. This is a fantastic topic that you brought up, Shannon, because there are a series of tools that I use that I then go to all the dental practices that I consult with and say, now you should use them too. Look how organized my life is. (laughs) Isn't it amazing how when you share an insight around something that you use, uh, people get blown away like, oh, that's amazing. And so we're going to share some stuff that we hope that you have an it's amazing moment around if not that's totally cool but also if we don't talk about a tool of the trade that has really transformed how you do business please let us know through our contacts that are in the show notes so julie perhaps we'll start off with the reason why i shared that this could be a cool episode so i am a note fiend i've got notebooks everywhere so for those who are viewing this on the visual the video through youtube um, there's a cupboard behind me and about three levels of those are filled with notebooks and i've also got a storage thing under my bed which is filled with notebooks now don't ask me why Uh, some of them are diaries and, and journals and i'm keeping those for i don't know a book Golly. <laughs> Other ones are, are work notes and I feel that there's something profound in there that I need to keep. But I recently bought myself, after the end of the financial year, I had a reward to, to buy myself, I had money for a reward for a goal that I had achieved in the business. And I bought myself a fancy little, it's like a modern day etch a sketch and it's called a remarkable and i'm not on their payroll but if they want me to be i'm very happy to take sponsorship (laughs) it is it is quite literally like a an etch a sketch so i I can write on my little etch a sketch remarkable and i can scribble it out and i can save things in notebooks for clients and things like that so i still really like handwriting so it gives you that but it's essentially electronic it's like the kindle of notebooks so there's no distractions you can't access the internet with it which people are like yeah but it's like a notebook I was like, yes but now i'm not going to have to store it in my cupboard in my office so and it's also good for the environment so win-win that's what sort of started our our discussion so julie very happy purchase that one was for you wasn't it it look it was i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie i was very excited they also just a little segue which always we get into the habit of doing here <laughs> we should just call this the segue podcast the segue we should actually rename a rebrand <laughs> i bought it in july as a pre-order for their new product and it got delivered this week this week is the second last week of November. So I have been waiting months and months and months for it. And in fact, the delivery was delayed. And there's something in that about building excitement to to receiving the item. Mind you, they were delayed so much that now the comments on social is getting a little bit antsy. But something to think about for your marketing, is there a way that you can build enthusiasm and excitement for a new product or service that you're going to release and it's so exciting and people are so bought into it that they are in anticipation of receiving it because I don't know what I was more excited about the anticipation of receiving it or actually receiving it so just um, something to note. Gosh, that's a very interesting thing you've touched on because that's right. We think that everyone wants every, and we think within ourselves that what we want as well is everything right now. And the benefit is having it right now. But absolutely, when we were younger, we were trained into waiting for things and developing that excitement and having things on lay-by and and, not after pay where you can have it now, then pay it off. (laughs) But you have to actually wait till you pay for it to have it come your way. You have to wait for Santa to bring the presents, wait for your birthday before you get those presents. And so there is absolute joy in that anticipation. And 
when you have high anticipation, you also, I think, that psychological thing of, you know, I've spent a lot of money on this item, so I'm going to make sure it's a great purchase, whether it be or not. I'm going to make sure that I talk about what a great purchase it is because I had to justify the money I spent on it and my decision. But maybe as well, that lends itself to the anticipation. The anticipation rises, and so you are going to make sure that that purchase is worthwhile because it has to be worth the journey. <laughs> yes, there's something in there, and I can't for the for the life of me think what the bias or the the effect is. There's a label. Mm. Uh, if people are really really curious, feel free to Google or tell us to Google, and we'll we'll come back on a podcast and tell you about it. <laughs> but it is really interesting, actually, because when I did get it. They had promoted it as just like writing in a notebook. And I was like, oh, my God, they've, they must have done so much work to make it really feel like a notebook. And it wasn't quite like that. It still felt quite technical. And I was a little bit disappointed. But I really couldn't live with the disappointment, number one, because I'd lived in anticipation for so long of it. And number two, I had spent a decent chunk of change on it. And so my brain was like, mm, let's not think about the negativities here, Shannon. Let's just, the positives, you get to store everything in notebooks, you get to email it to yourself, you get to store things in notebooks and email it to yourself <laughs> and you get it's to talk about it. That's an interesting it. concept, isn't it? We'll talk about that in, in future podcasts around the marketing element of that mm. and creating a product or service where you have that level of, active buy-in that they must have whether it be because of the, the size of the financial purchase or the weight that they had to have that's a really key that's going to stay with me for the week I'm going to keep thinking about that one well so interestingly other- enough oh, I was just interestingly enough that actually that's been coming up for you and I quite a lot so I think we're going to have to do a podcast on that and something about maybe influence and persuasion and how the brain thinks and things like that so well, beautiful come back I feel like, very I feel like there's going to be a Robert Cialdini quotation yeah I feel like <laughs> anyway but back to tools of the trade what else did you use well outside of my my new notebook and prior to that my paper notebooks which technically were massive tools of the trade I mean I think everyone would attest that we can't necessarily live without our phones these days but more to the point for me these days is all about software and different software solutions that I use to kind of keep things organized and under control. That's that's what I what I use a lot now. Should I jump? And what types of software have you got under your belt at the moment? Ooh, what types? Well, the productivity software that I have that have have been a constant for me, Evernote. So if if you haven't ever used Evernote, yes. If you if you've not ever used if you've not you have used, never ever ever used Evernote for every ever <laughs> anything. <laughs> so for those who know Evernote, you're already going. Oh, yes, amazing! It's complete. I'm one of them. I love it. It is one of the things on my list. Yeah, uh, but for those who haven't tried it. Evernote is a, it's kind of like OneNote or I think Google has something now which is similar. I haven't really tried. I've I've actually, no, I have tried uh, OneNote and I've tried, I've tried lots of other things, but for some reason Evernote has stuck. So Evernote allows you to write crazy enough notes. It's the weirdest thing. (laughs) You can also upload handwritten notes to Evernote. And I just would love us to count how many times I say no over the next little moment while we're talking about this. I'm looking forward to it. I've got my counter going. Fantastic. (laughs) Incidentally, my little remarkable can email to my Evernote and then I can search because what Evernote does very, very uh, smartly is it can read your handwritten notes and you can do searches on that. You can tag your notes under multiple categories. So, for example, if I was writing a note around, let's say, well, we, we just talked about a podcast that we're going to do. I'm going to do some research and I might tag that as research, persuasion, marketing, ideas. And then when I go into my ideas 
list, all of my notes that are relevant for ideas sit there. So it's a nice way of categorizing things. I don't know if ever any if that came through the microphone, but there's a nice crow that's actually joined us on the podcast, our first guest, Julie. Well, it's nice because I've got a couple of little uh, step-grandchildren running around as well, so there might be some noise from my <laughs> brand as well. <laughs> Yeah, so Evernote's Evernote's probably the first the first one on my list that is an, an old favourite. What about you say you use Evernote? I do use Evernote and just to let you know that was you did say the word note ten times in that little word. Oh, see now I'm gonna start counting you, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> the way I use Evernote is I house all of my stuff in there. So if I've drafted a welcome email and send it off to a new client, I'll throw it into Evernote as well. And I, all of those sort of step-by-step systems that I've got within my own business, I put them all in Evernote because then I'm not tied to my particular computer. I can dial in from anywhere. I can be on site at a practice for a whole day, have a lunch break, and still be able to send a new client that important email that I really wanted them to get quite quickly because I've got it all housed within that. Mm. So Evernote for me is fantastic, as well as just doing research for blog articles and all the rest of it. You just go onto the internet, you're searching around, that would be a fantastic idea for a blog, and then you just screen screen capture it and throw it straight into Evernote, and it just all happens automatically. It's just such a magnificent thing. Mm. The next thing I use for my business where I've got multiple different practices as clients is Trello. Trello is just one of the most awesome to-do list, goal tracking, um, tracking. You can attach videos, images, documents. You can have meeting agenda notes. You can allocate and delegate tasks to different people within the Trello board. And from a perspective where I'm coaching somebody and their whole team, And I would normally have had to go through that long process of providing a monthly summary of what we've achieved previous that month. I don't have to do that anymore. I've got my completed column in Trello and that's exactly where they go to find out what's been achieved so far. And it houses Mm. all the recordings of our live sessions. It uh, is tremendous. Trello is a tremendous tool for me. Mm. I've also used Trello and still use Trello a lot for clients. It's particularly useful to set up template cards So if I've got items that I want clients to fill out, I can pop that in their Trello board and I can do a copy of it and pop it in there. So it actually becomes quite time efficient to to use Trello. I don't have to continually find the file and upload the file. It's just sitting there and just copy it over. I also really love Trello for, for goal tracking, as you sort of said. I think that it's it's so easy to use. And I've used for people who are like, oh, but what about Asana? Yes, I've used Asana. I've used Smartsheet. Smartsheet's very, very good, very expensive. Um, I used to use it in a, another company, but I'm now using a different project management solution and I'll mention that in a second. Asana is very good, but I always, I never managed to connect up with Asana. I always went back to Trello just be, because it's easy and it's visual as well. I always like to, (laughs) because Julie works in dental practices, so Julie's specifically niched into dental practices, whereas I'm more a general coach. And I always spend way too long finding a photo that matches my client's industry. And I was really upset once when I had got a photo for a, and I I hope that this client hears this, they get the feedback. (laughs) They, they were a financial planner and in the background I found this really cute money pig, uh, a pig for uh, money box. <laughs> and when I went in a there. piggy bank? Do you mean a piggy bank? A piggy bank. Piggy bank. Yeah. Yeah, piggy bank. Yeah. <laughs> a pig. A pig. That's a bank. You store money in it. It's like a pig. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. <laughs> Oh. We, we are recording on a Saturday and maybe it shows <laughs> the brain sort of starts to slow down a little bit. Um, and I found when I went in there, they changed the background and I was like, yeah, no. but it was the best one out of all of them. It took anyway. me 45 minutes to find it. <laughs> it did. <laughs> so I'm very good my time. Trello's very good. Julie, 
you've done a recording of how to use Trello. Would If people emailed us about that, would you share that with them? Absolutely. Because there are so many wonderful ways that Trello can keep a whole team accountable and timelined to goal achievement, task achievement, that the one that the recording I've done is for dental practices, but you, it includes all of the hints on how to use it really well. So please email and I shall absolutely send it out easily. Fabulous. Mm. So one of the other things that I use because I do a lot of blogging is draft in so it's called draft but the actual website name is draft in d-r-a-f-t-i-n.com and that's a tremendous tool because of its simplicity quite often when you've got your email open there and this happening there and and you've got an application that's got lots of bells and whistles and features on it it's all very distracting this is designed to be as close to one sheet of paper one choice of type font, you can't bold, you can't do anything else. You just have to sit there and write without distraction. And I find that a really helpful tool. One of the wonderful ways I find it helpful is, again, I don't have to be trapped to my computer. I can start writing a blog here in front of my computer and then I can go to a cafe if I'm allowed to. If Dan Angels let, lets me go to, go to a cafe, I'll go to a cafe and then I'll have my little laptop with me and I'll think, oh, I can just jump straight on and start and continue drafting that blog because it's all up in the cloud. Mm, Okay. Uh, Whereas when you said you can't bold or I'm going to assume that you can't do bullet points either. No, you can't. I I, I got a little bit of a heart flutter, so that's not going to work for me. (laughs) I need need a little bit more creativity for for me. But I normally am that type that I do the heading first of an article or whatever I'm writing, I do it the heading first and then I go, is that the font that I want? I'm going to make it bigger. Oh, should I bold it? No. Just underline it? No, I'll just make it a larger font. That's what I'll do. And then how many returns shall I do? Three, four? Oh, I can <laughs> check my margins. And so that's where drafting just helps me focus just on the content. Just on the content. Lovely. Well, as you mentioned that, what came up for me was Grammarly is a new thing that I'm using it's really helpful to highlight where you might not make sense. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's on an adult, uh, with a subscription, you do actually need the subscription for it to do the higher level grammar, sentence structure, length checking. But I've been finding that quite reasonably useful. However, a caveat might be my computer, but I find that it, it for it when I use it with Google Docs, through the internet it tends to slow the google doc down quite dramatically so if you're having issues with grammarly and google docs that could be the grammarly so turn the grammarly just turn that off (laughs) yeah actually i've got i use grammarly as well and i've it tells you on your emails whether you're being polite enough over your emails and that's helpful (laughs) i do i do like now how and grammarly's we depending on where you've got it installed it is used in everything so every time I do a Facebook post or a LinkedIn post or what have you it actually comes up and it does give you your tone um so most of the time I'm amusing <laughs> what's wrong with mine it keeps saying I'm rude <laughs> <laughs> passive aggressive wow yeah, that's, that's weird <laughs> Going to another one on your list, Shannon. Well, going back to project tools, this one has changed my life a little bit. So I mentioned smart. How it's changed your life a little bit. (laughs) I don't want to. I don't want to over over promote here. (laughs) Everything I do. Slightly, slightly. I mean, it transforms my life when I'm looking at it. Is more to the point, maybe. Not not right at this moment. It's not open on my computer. So how can it be transforming my life right now? I don't know. <laughs> but I mentioned Smartsheet and I used Smartsheet at another organization when I the last one I was employed at. And I had it in my business for a little while, but their subscription model didn't work. Anyway, what was good about Smartsheet? It was very, very flexible. So if you're doing lots of project stuff and collaboration, have a look at Smartsheet. I really loved it. But I was recommended ClickUp, C-L-I-C-K-U-P, ClickUp. ClickUp is like fun smart sheet and it's 
it's easier to use than Asana or more fun to use than Asana. It's super, super customizable and the price is actually very, very reasonable. So it's a full project management tool where except that you can't resource plan, but well, I no, can you? No, you can't. It doesn't. It doesn't allow you to do sort of Microsoft project project planning, but it allows you to run a project. It allows you to have a whole bunch of custom questions and fields and things filled in. <laughs> Julie's just gotten distracted if you're watching the video, and I'm guessing her her grandkids are out in the back in the backyard. Yeah, they all have to be pretty careful. Oh, how beautiful! Yeah. <laughs> and I can smell the lamb in the in the oven. Oh, we're going to have to finish this podcast sooner than later then to get the <laughs> lamp out of the oven. Um, so ClickUp is really, really useful. Uh, it, it does time estimates and time tracking, which is helpful, especially if you have budgeted certain things for a project for a client. And I did that and I realised I went well and truly over budget on that project, but that's okay. <laughs> so ClickUp is one of those ones that I use. I don't have any clients using it because it's Trello is fabulous because very easy to use even if you don't know what you're doing. Whereas ClickUp is a little bit more technical. It actually is a little bit more project based, but great if you've got a team and you are running through projects. So ClickUp is one to look at. Pretty easy learning curve, but there is some, there is a bit of a learn, there is a slight learning curve because it, it is so customizable, but very, very good. And they're making updates all the time. So really good. Nice. Try to click up, and I still use it a little bit, Todoist. 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 Links to all of these will be in the show notes. Yeah. The reason I like Todoist, primarily what I use it for now, and I've got the free version, which does does well, is I save all of my bills from my email into Todoist in the app that I've got with my Outlook. And it just means that when I have to pay bills, so when they come in, I can just tag them as a bill and then file them away. It's the only thing that I do with certainty on my email. Anyone who has access to my email would know that it's a little bit out of control. But anyway, <laughs> um, but with that, I then go into just my bills list in Todoist. And because it's hooked into Outlook, it requires no brain space for me to take that action. It's just a click. And then uh, it opens up the email and I can see the attachment and I can pay the bills. Perfect. I love it. Mm. That kind of links me into my next tool and I do use uh, Gmail and Google Calendar and one of the tremendous things because you get so many emails and just yesterday I went through my 540 emails that were flagged as important <laughs> obviously <laughs> I never got around to and Very I did important. a big clean out. And what I'm going to start doing much more so now is receiving an email. I want to take action on it and I create it as an event in Google Calendar immediately and I actually allocate a time to address mm. that properly. So I love Gmail. I'm not one to have a whole bunch of different folders because you can just search for anything. The search function is so sophisticated and easy to use. I don't find the need to put a whole bunch of folders in place. So I really just have inbox spam junk <laughs> and that's about it and just that yeah I can flag things as important but the Google Calendar I don't know what I'd do without it mm. as a coach when you're allocating chunks of time to clients every one of my clients has a color and I can reflect back on any given month and assess how much time I've spent on each client that allows me to more effectively quote for future jobs because mm. I can start to recognise how much time I do spend with people. And, of course, just to, you know, keep track of everything. You Again, you've got the search function there. Oh, I remember I spoke to that person about this thing. And if you keep your Google Calendar entries populated with the documents you're going to be using on that day and with the content that you want within the description, you can search for stuff so easily now. Mm, mm. And, and to be fair, the Outlook does have the same feature. I use Google email and calendar, but I actually use the interface of Outlook because I much prefer Outlook. I've used it my whole working life and I just couldn't, my brain could not convert over to uh, to Google. So, yeah, I think you, you can do that the same. But I love that and I love the colour coding as well. I think 
there's something about color coding which helps your brain create a neural pathway which makes it easier so i think that's beautiful a really and i'll just throw in one more one more benefit if you make sure that your days are upon reflection an accurate representation of what you had achieved you know how there are some days you think gosh i've been so busy but it feels like i've achieved nothing put it all in Google Calendar, have it open constantly, constantly be adjusting how long it's taking you to do this, that and the other. One, it gives you a fair representation for future planning of how long certain things take. It generally takes me this long to do a, write a blog article, for example. But then upon reflection, you've got a sense of achievement and progress because look at the fullness of my days and what I did get achieved. Mm. I was busy through the day and I've, and I've got the results to prove it. Mm, helpful really helpful um uh, going back to paying bills I, i'm surprised that not many not more people know about receipt bank Ooh, i don't know about receipt bank i've surprised you well there you go so i my bookkeeper my original bookkeeper introduced me to receipt bank and quite frankly it was a godsend because i hate and I don't use the word hate very often, but this is a hate. I hate data entry. I, I actually, it's, it's, there's no chance. I would rather dig graves than do data entry. That's clean toilets. In fact, cleaning toilets is quite, you know, it's, it's satisfying. Quite, it's, it's satisfying. Um, what Receipt Bank does, and it does it better than the other ones that I've used, is you take a photo of your receipt and it does an OCR, I don't know what that means, but it basically converts it and types it into Receipt Bank. And then you just check your receipt, make sure it goes to the right category in your chart of accounts in your accounting software. And then you just ping it over into your accounting software. And then it's ready to go to be reconciled with your, with your bank feeds. So if you are still doing your own finances in your business, it depends on your size and uh, uh, and where your stage you're at. But, um, yeah, Receipt Bank, that's one that will change your life a little bit. Fantastic, um, fantastic. Yeah. I've got one more. Oh, I've like got one more. Ah, you go mine, is, mine is Canva. Oh. Canva I would use every single day. It makes your marketing and design and making sure that all of your messages that are going out there have some kind of element of your branding in it extraordinarily easy. Wow. See, I have I have not been able to get my brain around Canva. I'll try again. Yeah, and I'm pretty – I'd like to say I'm pretty tech savvy, but Canva, I've just not been able to get it. I just don't know what it is. But anyway, <laughs> that's why I outsource all I've, design stuff. I've got stuff. a video on how to use that too. For dental oh, practice. do you? Really <laughs> Fantastic. Well, um, yeah, I'm very happy to outsource that to someone else for, for that. But my last, my last <laughs> tool, Julie, it's old school. And for those who can't see – Look how beautiful that is. They That's color coded a big box of colored post it post -it notes. notes. Oh, I can't. <laughs> there we go. It's a box of post it notes. And for anyone who's watching it, you can see behind me there's post it notes. But if you're just listening to us, post it notes. I still believe that there is absolutely a place for post it notes, especially when you're looking at planning or brainstorming. Post it notes have that beautiful art of free flow of, of thinking without rhyme or reason and I absolutely love it. My tip of the trade is if you're using your post-its to stick on things, always buy the super sticky ones. Just do it. Just invest. Don't 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 budget on that. Don't assign budget to it because you'll be disappointed if you don't Use the super sticky Use ones. the three M. Don't buy burrows. Use the three well, M. <laughs> well, even yeah, you just just make sure whichever brand it is, it's super sticky because trust me when I say I've tried them all and super sticky sticks and the other ones do not. Simple. <laughs> it's simple. <laughs> and I'm very happy to take endorsements from Post-it. Um, from <laughs> I know that this podcast is probably really, we're, we're probably smashing it right now, Julie. So um, no doubt our, our following will uh, will mean that 3M I have got us on a radar I'm excited about that <laughs> sponsor we'll have that'll be our first sponsor our first sponsor post-it notes and remarkables uh plus 
ClickUp, Trello, Evernote, Todoist, <laughs> Grammarly, and Receipt Bank. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful. So if any of the listeners do want to let us know of their fantastic tools of the trade, we would love to hear about them. It's such a wonderful thing. We live in a world that it is so easy to become more efficient, more productive, and just generally happier while we're doing our work, while we're doing the thing that we do. Mm, Fabulous. There's lots of productivity tips out there, productivity tools out there. And, um, yeah, share yours with us. We hope that what we've shared today has been useful. And, um, yeah, more power to us. And may I wish for you, Shannon, and all of the listeners out there, as one of their grandchildren is in tears. (laughs) (laughs) Something's gone awry. I wish for you a very organised, very productive and very blissful time achieving all of your tasks all the things that you need to do with all of your wonderful tools thank you so much truly and likewise (laughs) to you and to our listeners we'll see you all next time see you bye